All right. Um, I think the out of offices are read only. So Matt, you've got yeah. the first one up. All right. So we have this uh, OKR around you know performance of large MRs, obviously. Hopefully everyone knows about that by now. Um, one of the things we're going to do here, it's kind of the end of the month, but we should be kind of scoring these OKRs and giving them kind of a progress update. And I'm not sure, I was kind of wanted to get people's feedback on like, how, how should we give these a, this, this specific OKR uh, score? Um, should we base it just on the performance time? Should we use um, how much work we've been putting into it? I don't know. Just looking for some opinions. Mute and I'll type this. Um, I think given that we have like a incredibly objective OKR, which seems um, rare for some of our OKRs, like we should, this should be purely measurement based, right? So we have a before measure and in theory we will have after measures. Um, and I would say that's the progress. So I would, which also means I think we're at 0% still, um, which is fine. I think we sort of knew we would have a lag leading into this and expect more of this to sort of roll at the end. But um, I don't think we should be measuring because we're, we're saying we're, we have like goals we want to hit. Um, I don't think we should be accounting for like work or thought or planning activities into this. We should. I think be purely looking at the outcomes would be my yeah, my suggestion. Then I probably should know this. Do we have dashboards that measure this? Or we have the so Grant moved over the site speed dashboards and the GPT dashboards to use the new agreed upon um, MR yeah. MR last week okay yeah i did see that i think okay. and so that would be the baseline zero measure because we hadn't shipped we have not shipped any improvements yet so whatever those reported last week would be our zeros um, so we should probably document that that's, that's probably something we need to get documented in there like here's where we're starting yeah um, and then that would be able to easily tell us what the targets we have to achieve are for both those mm -hmm. pieces um okay memories Harder? I don't. Is memory in the site speed tests, Andre, or is memory? It, it is something in there. There's a JS heap. Uh, so the, when we talk to Tommy, it's not completely reliable in what's in the browser, but will allow us to see the delta. Uh, so we have on the. Um, if you go into the reports, there's a section called um, metrics. So it's one of the tabs, and then at the bottom there's something called JS heap. And then one it's used, the other it's total. So we can use those metrics to track the difference and to see if we can improve them by our goal. So yes, my answer is yes, sort of. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of like what I feel too, uh, Matt. I, if it's important for us to not get ahead of ourselves. So we have, we do have some improvements already merged to master, but they're not enabled by default. So we shouldn't count with those. We should only count with the ones that are, that our users are seeing directly. So I think we might add a reference to the OKR as a comment that uh, we have ongoing work, but as for the metric, because I think there's an, there's an important communication part of this. There's a lot of eyeballs on that OKR. Uh, so it's important to kind of like vocalize that there, there is shipped work, just not enabled for customers, but for the number of the metric, definitely not zero. Yeah. I'll leave a comment on the OKR. Sounds good. Can I ask a clarifying question on the ally stuff? Wit, I went and searched and there are three OKRs that all say the same thing. Uh, there might be more uh, than that actually. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I don't, I guess, um, and like I tried to look at this tool and how it was set up and we can like do this somewhere else because <laughs> I'm not technically assigned any of these because they we decided to flow these through engineering and product and not group um, which makes this a little bit more complicated um, 
So I don't actually think I can even update or do anything to these OKRs now, um, which is, I'm not sure if that's intended or not intended. Yeah, um, I that I don't know. Um, and I can try to figure that out. But yeah, there's, right, like each level has like its own version of it. So that's why you're seeing so many, I don't know. There's, yeah. There's, there's a little uh, little work that still needs to be done on Ally, I think, to figure this out. Because like I have one assigned for like our team. So if I update this, then all of these other ones above it will get automatically get updated. Um, kind of rolls up like that. So, so you only really need to update it in one place and then they should all be. But I don't know if I should just be not have this and just use the one that Christopher created at the top level because that's kind of like the, the main one that people are looking at. But. I think, so if you, um, so I think the, the basically the key results, so the, the deepest nested is where you would uh, update it. And then yeah. it's, uh, cascades up. Um, so you would not update the, the top level one. Right. Um, and we, we, have, we have the same thing for, in, for the UX OKRs. And basically we're saying, hey, this is the goal for the whole department. And then what we did was create or duplicate those goals with exactly the same names, but for the specific managers. So it's basically just a way like, okay, this is the goal. And for each person, you can individually update it uh, if you want. But here, given that it, it's a, uh, a key result just for the code review team, I would expect this to have like uh, what, what you're hovering right now, maybe one for the back end and another for the front end or just one for the whole team um, and nothing else. Right, so we'll figure out the, yeah, I think that makes sense. I will, we'll have to um, get used to this tool a little bit. I think in theory how it should work would be like, we don't have to talk about OKRs that much, but Christopher, someone would have, okay, we need to do this. And then that might span multiple groups. And my key results here might be something specific about, you know, backend stuff that would flow into that. There might be a couple, and then maybe Andre had a couple that, apply to the front end and then all of those combined would flow up into the one main OKR, but um, that's not really how we've set up OKRs in the past, uh, especially some of these that we just copy and paste everywhere. So we'll figure that out though, but um, that can be a topic for a different conversation. Yeah, I'll have a look when I, so I have been asked to create my OKRs too. So even though we have a joint OKR between product UX, backend and front end and quality, we all have their our own OKRs individually for the teams. They're just the, the same. So it will cause that. You will have the front end once it's created will be there. I think we'll have to find a way to work around how the numbers are reported up. I don't know if they're if they support that, because if you have 50% achieved, but I have 50% achieved because it's the same number, we're measuring the same thing, that will account for like 25% for Darva. So it's not accurate. It, should, it shouldn't be the um, calculated in the normal way. So we'll have to figure that out, but that's a limitation of the tool. We can skip it for now. And just for my own clarity, are, are y'all being asked to report via Ally and not via the issue? When we started this, we sort of agreed that we would use an issue. So now are we not going to use the issue? Is that the theory or are we using both? I think it's ally supposed to be ally, right, Matt? I, I think so. That's okay. <laughs> it's tricky because yes, um, I was then asked to keep ally updated with like the status and the scores um, or percentage complete or whatever. But ally, I'm, I'm confused if like we should be putting like links to issues. I mean, I have a link to the um, like the OKR issue, 
because we kind of moved it over, but should I be saying like, oh, we did this, this, this issue and I like fill in a bunch of details in Ally or should that stay in GitLab? I don't know. We still have to yeah. figure some of that out. That's why okay. this is a trial, I guess. And trying so I, I think we can we can um, agree here that I think the hardest part of scoring OKRs is getting to the actual number. So I don't think it's that much of a hassle to keep the issues updated as well for this quarter for everyone's benefit. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I have my next point. Can I go? Uh, right. So um, I'm trying to provide an update. Um, we have shipped behind the feature flag, the improvements uh, for virtual scrolling. Um, it has, still has some experience gaps, so that's why it's not enabled um, for users. But we also allowed you to enable the mode for virtual scrolling with a parameter on the URL if you want to play around with it. Um, so all you have to do is just enable it with um, a, a question mark, virtual scrolling equals true, and you'll have that to play around in your browser. Feedback was welcome, of course, but that means that we we're able to hook it up with the dashboards that we have. So these are not the 10K reference architecture that quality uses. These, these are the ones that we're tracking uh, on a live data um, on production. So that's where we're measuring there. Uh, we have one specific for virtual scrolling and that allows us to compare with the non-virtual scrolling. So that just so it's clear, once we enable this by default, we will be able to see the historical without virtual scrolling and then coming down with the virtual scrolling enabled. Okay, this is just a temporary entry so that we can see and compare the metrics. Our idea is that over time, we might just remove this virtual scrolling and keep the, the, the one that has been tracked over the past couple of months and years, I think. Um, yeah. So that's that. I wanted just to give you a heads up so you can take a look at the numbers and any questions and feedback are welcome. The plan is that we close off the required usability aspects this milestone and we're looking to potentially enable it uh, in production on 14.0 if there's no blockers from UX review, of course. Um, I'm not sure if we'll be in time to enable it by default on 14.0, but I want you to keep I want, I want to keep you in the loop. So yeah, Kai, you have a question here? Yeah, I mean, it looks like the only improvements into total blocking time and not necessarily into uh, like everything. I, there's improvements, but I would say they're not um, like LPP is slightly lower, but not. Mm -hmm. I don't know, two tenths, maybe that is, or tenth, maybe that is significant. I don't know. Are we expecting that that gets better or is this more like a, um, the user can start interacting faster sort of improvement? So like, I don't, I guess I'm trying to figure out like, does this really, in the context of the OKR, this doesn't feel like sure. it actually improves the rendering performance performance by X percent, although maybe it gives us some couple points here, but like, but there is like a significant sort of like usability uptick, it feels like. So there's many, there's many things there. There's the reason why these met these measurements of like the Google Web Vitals, the FCP, the LCP, all of those are generic measurements and they weren't being fed too much by the, uh, full render of the diff. As soon as we render the first part of the page, then those numbers are taken. And I do think they will potentially be lightened up because of the memory usage will be lighter, um, but not by a lot. The biggest wins are definitely on the on the TBT and the time, the, the time to interactive. Um, now, I do expect this to, to um, achieve one huge improvement on the total, on the time to render, the full time to render the whole page, um, which translates itself to um, the, the users being able to interact quicker. Um, but that's, again, depends on how we're measuring the timing improvement. If we're just looking at the LCP, this is probably not gonna be that, uh, but the LCP is already below target. So that might not be the best met metric to focus on anyway. Um, but yes, so we'll be definitely, it will have a user direct impact, 
Uh, it will have an impact on the memory too. Um, so if we go to the details, we already see, see some improvement, um, not as much as I had hoped on the JS heap, um, but um, we do see some improvements. I'm gonna, my computer is melting, but I'm gonna try to share my screen. So if you'll just give me one second. So on is the reports- total render time in here? I don't see total like render time in that anywhere. Um, they sh should be fully loaded. You can see There's that. one there. Yeah, fully loaded. I pasted that into the agenda. Okay, thank you. It's, it's the last item in this. Yeah. Um, so coming back to this, uh, under this uh, metrics section, metrics session, section down at the bottom, we can see the JS heap ones, and these numbers are improved. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not completely clear on the difference. Uh, I, think, I think total size is the one that it's used total, but then browser does some garbage collection, but I'm, I'm guessing here. So this is the actual one at the end, uh, which would bring us from 273 million bytes, which is like 273 megabytes, roughly, to 184. But it is showing some improvement with that we can track. It's not a, the only strategy we have to nail that metric, but uh, it is one of the, the biggest ones. So we'll, we'll try to keep track here, but also on some manual testing. That's it. Um, any questions, thoughts? Can you, can we add fully loaded to one of the um, like big boxes on the right only because clearly I did not see that it existed in the little <laughs> list below. Uh, and You're that right. might make and it, it easier yeah. for other people to do that. I'm not entirely sure if we can customize it, but I'll, I'll take a look. I'll ask, okay. I'll ask the team if there's a way. Thanks. Yeah, this is a, I think it's really good. Um, it's very good improvement and uh, yeah i think that um for very large merge requests at least when i was testing it it was had a, a very clear improvement um of course it didn't improve everything as we see but um yeah it did improve some things and uh, i think it's a good good improvement so thanks phil if you're watching this <laughs> yeah um, so we're still we're still waiting on on you and, and Sunjun to provide us with some guidance of anything left that we might have missed. Uh, so keep your eyes open and and do uh, relate to us. So open issues that's the best way, so that we can immediately jump on it um, and fix them. Um, there's still the question of the search that I think is going to be a a question that once everything is in place we might want to have a conversation about um, whether it's something that we accept as a cost, or if it's something that we want to have a conversation about how we can mitigate the lack of that, um, building an idea, build, building our own search, building our own. So that's a, that's something that we might want to consider chatting about. But for now, I think we're just going to be pursuing this a little bit deeper alongside other investigations. So that's it. Cool. I don't and, have anything uh, else. Just to, just to clarify, it would be, um, the feature flag when we release it would be off by default. Uh, so our idea is just to follow the normal rollout. So as soon as we are okay with the experience, we'll be turning it on for GitLab project. And then for www.gitlab.com, then it's up to us to kind of like decide the rollout. We can spread around gitlab.com before the end of 14.0. It would give us a lot of time to collect feedback. Uh, but given the big, the big change, I think we need to be careful about rolling out default enabled, but again, that's once we once we know the final state is when we'll be able to make that decision. I think. Yeah, I think the so right now we have one issue for fixing the links to files or lines. Mm -hmm. Probably similar. One is files. Things. The other is discussion. The other and I think Phil uncovered now the line numbers as well. Right, and, uh, and I think what you mentioned about searching uh, and using the browser find function, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's something that we need to solve before, but because we have a lot of feedback 
from users. We don't have quantitative data, but we have qualitative data that shows that people used it, uh, especially in large merge requests to find things. Um, so, so yeah, we need to look into that before enabling this. So we might make sense to create an issue about that particular part so that we can start brainstorming how we can get around that. Okay. We have a couple of ideas. Um, I think enabling this in production will be providing a lot of feedback, like real world usage as well. Um, say that we turn it on for a couple of weeks and nobody complains on GitLab.com, that's a useful metric, I think, or a useful piece of feedback. Um, if they come back immediately on the same day on Twitter and saying uh, they, 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 they broke my, my, my MR experience, then we can definitely take that feedback too. But uh, we might want to start a conversation around that mitigation of the search. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can definitely test it. Uh, but my assumption is that it will break. Uh, people's workflows. Um, because, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't expect it to break every single review session, um, but it would definitely break uh, people's workflows now and then. Uh, and they would have to then say, okay, now I have to review everything in my ID, um, which is something that people already do when they want to find references and definitions because we don't support that natively in merge requests. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's a concern that we need to address before enabling this. Well, let's have a chat because there's, there's some solutions that revolve around disabling the virtual scrolling on that moment, but there's no really a great way of cross-browser detection that the user triggered the native search. Like for example, mobile, we won't be able to track that on mobile. Uh, but on, on normal laptops and devices, we can detect the keyboard strikes. So we could disable the virtual scrolling at that time, but we don't know what the experience would be. Probably the browser would hang up there. Uh, so we have to talk about that. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I'll create Thanks, an issue for it. Thank you. Cool. Uh, Kai, you have your next point. Yeah, one last one in here. Sure. Um, we have been brainstorming ideas for increasing adoption of GitLab workflow, which is the VS Code extension. So I linked the issue where we tagged the growth team um, and there's some other ideas in there, but if anyone on this call or anyone watching has ideas, please feel free to add them to that issue. Um, and then if you promote GitLab things on your socials, uh, Tomas has a, another blog post out, so please share Twitter, LinkedIn, um, that is part of our acquisition strategy for the extension. Um, so those all help to get those out there to help people uh, download it and find it and all the all the great work that's in there. So uh, two things to to bring up since we don't uh, we don't talk about it much on this call. But uh, Pedro, you have a question. Yeah, I was wondering if there's a specific adoption goal of uh, this many monthly active users or just, um, yeah, an open brainstorming session just to figure out things to, you know, increase adoption in general. Well, let me see. There's not anything defined. What I will say is when, when we started talking about this and um, sort of talking about it in the context of not investing in the web IDE as much when this was still an editor, um, we sort of made a bet like that we would be able to gather more users than the web IDE has um, because there's a theory that like VS code holds 50% of the market share, source code has 2 million users per month or something like that. And then, um, so if we got half of those, we should have a million users in VS code and like we have not a million users. Um, and the web IDE, I think historically has been somewhere in the neighborhood of like, um, I was trying to find the dashboards for it, but I think it's, it used to be like in the forties to fifties when we sort of started talking about this um, in terms of users. And so I'd expect us to be better than the web IDE would be like my first benchmark goal threshold that I want to cross. Um, and we're not there yet. The web IDE still has probably four or five times the number of users that the VS Code extension has, I think. So uh, we're, not even, we're not there yet. Um, so that's the first goal. And then we need to figure out how to get 
closer to what we believe a 50% market share would look like. Um, but, but the first goal is to, you know, sort of cross that, that web ID uh, line the chart. Do you, th is there a, um, a specific, um, thing that you think it's, uh, it's blocking our adoption? Is there like a specific hurdle that you think if we do this, or if we solve that, uh, we would be able to have more adoption? Um, I mean, my primary hypothesis is that it's like an awareness thing. It's people don't know that it exists. It's not like it's in the GitLab UI. And then if you're in VS Code um, and working, it's probably not likely that you would think about download like looking for a GitLab extension if you sort of had everything else you needed because really you sort of might think about GitLab as just like git push and then you open your merge request and then you go to GitLab. You don't think about like all of the other things that we have in the extension that provide you value are sort of you might have other things there that that deal with those things. And I think that's where um, I think I think it's primarily an awareness thing. And so the question is like could we insert GitLab workflow into the GitLab application in places um, that would you know, help highlight that, hey, you can also do some of these things in VS Code. Um, I think there's an idea, I think I floated this idea before, where like, uh, when you get push from the command line, we show you a link to like open a merge request. Uh, it would be amazing if somehow we detected that your push was from VS Code and then we're like, hey, download GitLab workflow, but I don't think that's like, um, I don't think we get a user agent on a git push that would like allow us to return that in the message, but. Um, sort of crazy ideas like that to like get that. Um, I, I think it's mostly an awareness thing because many people have VS Code and have lots of extensions. It's just a question of like, did they know this one even existed? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, when you were talking, I was yeah as a, as a joke we could um, if you we detect a very large and slow merge request in the UI, we display a message saying, "Hey, here's a better there's a better experience." Don't use GitLab UI, download our extension for VS Code. Um, I think that would be perfect, right? That would solve the adoption problem because we have a lot of problems with large merge requests. So let's tap into that audience, right? <laughs> You're joking, but we can we have access to the timing. So we can just like, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but when you're loading Gmail, when you're in the loading screen, you have a little link. Hey, this if this is taking too long, you can go to the simple basic HTML version. So there are ways and moments to upsell VS Code, GitLab Workflow. I think there's some challenges that the link that we have kind of forces us to clone the entire project, but we can follow the pattern that we have for the checkout branch on the merge request widget. It already has the opening web ID. If we rethink the way that area works, if you click now today on the checkout branch, it will show you a pop-up, a dialogue with instructions. So if there's ways for us to give a little bit of an instructions about, have you cloned the project? Click here. Have you already, have you not cloned the project? Click here or follow these steps. This is a UX and challenge and communication challenge, but I think there's a lot of opportunities to upsell it. And I, I think it makes perfect sense. It's a GitLab property. We should definitely upsell it. Yeah, I That's think there's opportunities. It's, yeah, it's just yeah. all. We just got to think through them. So um, if you've got those ideas, please feel free to drop them in the issue. Um, and then we can figure out how we prioritize that work in conjunction um, with some of the other stuff going on. But wanted to put it on the radar. And thanks so much for another great blog post. <laughs> really good stuff. Yeah, and Amy left a great idea about leveraging the docs. So yeah, post that in the issue, Amy, great idea. Yes. Can't awesome. type much. 13 pound cat. She's <laughs> <laughs> helping. Yes, you can't move. All right. All right, Go. everyone. Enjoy the rest of your week. Great Bye. to see you. Bye.